What's going on, everybody? It is Gabe from the Spine Crackers podcast here to give you all a. I just got back two days ago from my annual summer <clears throat> fucking walkabout on the East Coast, seeing family and my wife's family. And uh, so we just got back a couple days ago, and I thought I'd do a little um, book haul video. I did some purchasing over the summer and my very in my various at my various kind of stops and um i got 28 28 books here uh so we're gonna go quick i'm just gonna talk you through what i bought um thought process i have read some of these this is not gonna be a what i read this summer video so i'm not gonna talk about my thoughts or anything on any of the books um that i have read already that i bought but i will kind of flag that i that i um have already read them um, I was going to start the video by going through the uh, kind of philosophy nonfiction books that I bought, but I figured that'd be boring for everybody and no one's going to watch that far anyway. So I'm going to leave those till the end. And if I started there, people would click off the video. So, you know, YouTube, I'm, I'm a pro uh, at this clearly. All right. So, and I'll, when I remember at, or, and, or when I find a bookstore issued, um, bookmark, I will shout out the bookstores that I purchased these at. Uh, but I don't remember. All of them. I remember a number of them, but. Um, I think I'll probably, I could probably get most of them. Okay. Anyway, starting off, we have Emma Klein's The Girls. Uh, this is a, I did read this already this summer. This was a nice kind of beach, beachy book that I read when we were visiting my uh, in-laws in Delaware. Uh, this is a 2016 novel by Emma Klein. This was recommended to me by a friend. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to talk too much about my thoughts on the book, but it's basically about uh, it's kind of a historical fiction a retelling of the uh, Manson Manson girls from the perspective, not of one of the girls who is sort of right in the middle of the shit, but someone kind of on the periphery in the, the, the sort of Manson cult. Obviously, the guy everyone has different names and stuff. So it's a sort of historical fiction uh, retelling of those uh, those events. But I'll say I liked it. I'll probably pick up another client at some point. Um, I got uh, this. I got at um, Dove and Hudson, I believe is the name of the store in uh, Albany, New York. There's a few others that I got there. I'll just shout, I'll just say the names at one time uh, if as I remember them. Picked up uh, William Gass's On Being Blue. I've not not read much Gass. Um, this is an uh, I know not a, a fiction, a sort of philosophical treatise, I suppose, on uh, blueness, but. Uh, I know a lot of folks um, in the Discord and people that I know are really big fans of gas, so uh, I thought I'd pick up a short one. I know it's not fiction, not the best place to start. This is a theme. This will come back, actually. If you know anything about me or you're in the Discord, Spinecrackers, um, patreon.com slash Spinecrackers, you can join that uh, and get in on our Discord for as little as $2 a month. You get uh, full episodes of the show. Um, we just did a fun video. All of us were together on vacation, so we recorded a, a, a live video of us taking some Q&A questions and uh, playing a literature game, which was kind of hilarious. That's all over on the uh, Spinecrackers Patreon. Um, okay, next I picked up uh, Georges Simenon's The Glass Cage. Uh, again, if you know me or the show at all, you know Simenon is my favorite author. Um, and so anytime I see a, a book of his that I don't have, or even an edition that I think looks uh, kind of interesting of one that I do have, because... Um, you know, Penguin was was releasing all of the McGray novels. I think they still are. Um, but and then um, NYRB had a few of his uh, Roman Dur that they've released over the years. Um, so I like seeing some of these older editions of the Simonons as well that I don't have. And I don't actually have any edition of this one and I have never read it. So uh, this was a nice, uh, a nice little find uh, as well. Nice little hardcover. Uh, okay, next up is Julian Barnes's Flaubert's Parrot. Um, I picked this up at the Book Barn in Niantic, Connecticut. For my money, the best bookstore in the country. Haven't been to all of them. It's my favorite. I love going there whenever I get a chance, usually once uh, a year every summer when I'm back that way. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It's like, it's like a, you know, you hear these stories about like English towns that are like, like, I, I think there's a town in Ireland or England that's like all bookstores or something. It's almost like a small village of, of a bookstore. There's all these little outbuildings and barns and the main house and all this. It's, it's really, a and then they have a, like a, another one downtown in, in Niantic. And apparently there's a third one now. So they're expanding. Um, fantastic bookstore anyway i picked this up um because of that video that i just mentioned that we put out on the patreon the other day of us um playing the uh the literature game the game was 
it, uh, it, it was these cards and on the front it had the first and last lines of a book and you had to guess what the book was um so that was fun very some some obviously some easier and some much more difficult and many that we didn't even attempt because it was all a lot of it was put it was put out by the british library so a lot of it was obscure <laughs> obscure british literature that we had no no fucking clue but anyway um i picked this up because this was one of the one of the ones uh that we did attempt and i've never read it so i've never read any julian barnes so this will be my first flaubert's parrot next up um another william g not gas but gaddis um a frolic of his own uh have not obviously read this um I've only read one or two of the shorter, less significant Gaddises. Um, so I'm, I'm this year. I'm hoping to, you know, I have the recognitions and uh, Jr. over there. So hopefully, I'll read one of those and or this um, this year, so I can kind of be a serious literature person and have a f formed opinion on Gaddis. Next, um, now, now we're getting into the NYRB section. Um, my sort of standing philosophy, generally speaking, is if I see an NYRB that I don't have, I buy it. The covers, I'm just a sucker. Um, and uh, usually it's good books, obviously. So um, getting a nice little collection going. This is uh, Renata Adler's Speedboat. Don't know much about it. I think I think I saw a few reviews around on BookTube of, the, of this book um, over the last few years. So uh, I thought I'd pick it up. Um, I think I got this one. This is the book. This was the bookmark in it anyway from uh, Owl Pen Books uh, in Greenwich, Greenwich, New York. Um, not Greenwich, Connecticut. Greenwich, New York. Don't get it twisted. Um, and me and Matt uh, from the show went there. Uh, and that was my first time. He did an interview with them, the owners of that store, uh, the new owners, um, a couple years ago or last year. Uh, that's over on the Spinecrackers Patreon as well. Fantastic store. Kind of similar vibes to the book barn that I just mentioned, uh, just on a little bit of a smaller scale, but incredible selection. Uh, I got a ton of stuff there. Um, that, most of which, again, I don't remember where everything came from. But Renata Adler, Speedboat. Excited for that one. Uh, another one that I just kind of picked up on the NYRB vibes and having vaguely heard of it before, but The Silentiary by Antonio Di Benedetto. Don't know much about it, but again, one that I think I saw some reviews going around about uh, on BookTube at some point. This one, um, another NYRB. I This is a, a, a In a Lonely Place, the Dorothy Hughes novel. Um, and this, is a, this one I sort of uh, have heard of. Um, Maybe I'm absolutely tripping, but I believe there's a movie that I saw years ago that was made of this, but uh, sort of a mystery, um, you know, noir type novel from what I understand. Um, I don't think I've ever read any Hughes, so this will be a first. This one, don't tell anybody, but I actually borrowed on an extended loan from the free library at uh, my in-law's retirement community. Shh. Uh, this one, I picked up entirely on NYRB vibes. Samskara, a ride for a dead man. You are Anantha Murthy. Murthy, I believe. Sorry. Um, don't know anything about it. Uh, I saw the Naipaul blurb on the back. I saw a reference to Things Fall Apart and Season of Migration to the North. So, grabbed it. NYRB. So, that's the four NYRBs that I got. Next one, this is uh, a book that I picked up. Um, for the podcast, we're going to be doing in a few episodes, The Tortilla Curtain by T.C. Boyle. I've never read any Boyle. Uh, this is a theme. I, apparently, I've never read anything. You know, every time I go buy fucking books, I realize I've never read any author, apparently, because I haven't read like 90% of the people whose books that I bought this summer. But that's a good thing, I suppose. You never run out of fun new stuff, right? Um, I feel like Boyle is one of these people who is kind of like vaguely respected in the literature world, and he's published a shitload of novels and short stories and stuff, but you never... You never really hear of like boil heads. I don't know if there are any like true boil heads out there. If there are, please in the comments, let me know and let me know if this is a bad place to start because I always pick the worst book to start with uh, a new author apparently, which uh, more on that later. Um, but yeah, I picked this for the podcast and I saw it at the book barn in Niantic. So I picked up the copy, a uh, very cool cover, um, very cool kind of um, jacket. Uh, again, don't know a ton about Boyle other than he's fucking around. He's a man about town, I guess. I picked up then uh, two books by Adul Razak Gurnah. 
who I had never read, the Nobel Prize winner, uh, 2021. Oh, it's right here on the cover. Lovely. Um, I was going to say 2022, but whatever, a few years ago. Um, never read it. Never read any Grenache, so uh, I thought I'd start that uh, this year. So this is By the Sea. Don't know anything about it. And this is Paradise. Don't know anything about it other than they were both written by Abdul Razak Grenache. And I want to read them. And these are from these were from Dub and Hudson in Albany. Okay, next up, I got four Saul Bellow books. I've read three of them, so uh, I got A Theft, The Bellarosa Connection, and Seize the Day. These are all novellas, pretty much 100, 120. I think Seize the Day is the longest. It's like 120 pages. Um, and then I got uh, the the big one. Or the one I think maybe well, most well known for maybe Herzog, but uh, Adventures of Augie Marsh. Okay, so this is the one I haven't read yet. Obviously, it's longer, um, but I read the other three novellas, and I mentioned already that I tend to, when I'm picking up a new author, start with um, people who are familiar with their, that author. Often tell me I, that you know why the hell did you start with that book? That's their worst book. What are you doing? You absolute idiot. And I think I may have done something similar with Bellow this summer. I started with this, A Theft, which is. Um, about a you know sort of New York City pseudo socialite lady uh, you know um, uh, sort of girl bossing and um, a sort of lost flame that she's kind of in and out of love with and reconnecting with over the years and this ring that he got her that's very meaningful to her that she loses gets back and then gets stolen again um, it was okay I didn't really like it very much um, I didn't, it, it's just felt kind of all over the place. I didn't really, the prose I thought was excellent. Uh, that's uniformly across all of, all three of these. Bellow, I really love his style of prose and just the, the writing on a sentence to sentence level. But in terms of the actual um, story and, and kind of what Bellow was going for here, I didn't really get it. I said I wasn't going to talk about my thoughts on these too much, so I won't. Um, Bella Rosa Connection, this is about a, uh, a, uh, a a European immigrant Jew who was who was anonymously rescued from the Nazis by through a sort of underground railroad network, um, and he discovers that the person that that got him out was a sort of Broadway um, big shot in New York City, and um, it's about his kind of endeavor to meet this person um, and thank him, and this person for whatever reason is not interested in meeting him. And then I read Seize the Day, a sort of um, uh, existentialist kind of novella about this uh, older guy, you know, I mean, not older, mid 30s, I think, um, who's kind of down on his luck, uh, div not divorced, but separated, paying money to his, his wife who, uh, and his kids, um, can't really kind of find his footing in life, his relationship with his father is bad, he uh, gave, gave what is perhaps a scammer a bunch of money to put in the stock market, uh, and he's very stressed about that, and it's just kind of a sort of a day or a day or a couple days in his life, um, in that kind of atmosphere of of existential stress and and sort of dread and you know quarter life crises and things like that. I liked them in the order that I read them, so I didn't like this. This was better. This was very good. Uh, and then Adventures of Augie Marsh, haven't gotten to yet. Excited to get to that. All four of those came from Owl Pen books. Uh, what's next? Okay, we'll do this. This is the one that I'm... These are like literally, I'm surrounded by these on my desk. Um, this is Storm of Steel by Ernst Jünger. Uh, we've done a Jünger on the podcast, The Glass Bees, and then we as a group, um, before we started the podcast, had read Jumsville, another Jünger novel. And uh, this is his most, I think, well-known by by a long shot. It's a memoir of World War One. I've started reading it. I'm uh, exactly 100 pages in, uh, and it's very good. Um, I think Jünger is a really interesting character. Um, probably a Nazi, which, you know, not great, uh, but also you sort of radical centrist with respect to the Nazis, right? What is the... the <laughs> The um the bio has a has a funny phrase you know it's kind of like the one of these like bro he's not a Nazi bro I swear I swear he's not a Nazi bro he's a controversial inner emigrant distanced from the regime yet only obliquely in opposition okay sure bro anyway really good book really just visceral and and you know excellent descriptions of 
of um, war and battle, and specifically that kind of unique trench warfare from World War I. Um, so I'm excited to finish this uh, in the next couple of days, hopefully. Next, um, I have a, a sort of omnibus of novels and novellas by Colette, uh, the uh, French author. Not familiar with her work uh, at all. Um, I wasn't before I saw the sort of Colette section at um, Owl Pen Books. And there, I, I, was, I originally was going to grab a um, uh, NYRB collection of, I think, two novellas. But then I saw this sitting right next to it, and it had the two in the R NYRB one plus five more. So I figured I might as well pick that up um, just in, in terms of bang for my buck. Uh, you know, can't speak for the, to, the, to the translation quality or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we're saving money over here. Per, uh, finance, personal finance tips from um, Gabe, the book, the book buyer. Not financial advice. Uh, do I legally have to say that? I think so. So yeah, seven uh, Colette novels. So I'll probably kind of pick through this one by one. I'm not going to read it front to back at once. I'll probably pick through over the over uh, the next year or so. Um, Lauren Groff's Matrix. Um, I uh, have heard of Groff's work. Um, sort of, you know, I'm tr I'm trying to read more contemporary authors. I'm really trying. I read the Emma Klein. Um, I picked up the Groff. There's another one that we're going to be doing for the podcast uh, in, the, in a, the next couple episodes. Um, so I'm really trying to better myself by reading more contemporary authors. And I'd heard good things about Groff. Never read her. I was looking for another book. I forget which one um, that I had had in my head for whatever reason, but they didn't have a copy um, at the book barn where I got this. So I just grabbed what they had, which was this one, Matrix. So uh, we'll see. Next up, uh, I have Redburn, Herman Melville, um, Moby Dick, probably my favorite book. And wh what is this? Where is this? This is not. This is not where I bought it. Academy Books, records, and CDs. This is not where I got this. I would, did not go to New York City this summer. Um, that was just in there. Uh, I forget where I got this one, but um, yeah, this is the Northwestern uh, University Newberry edition of the writings of Melville, which I think is the sort of academic kind of authoritative version. Um, correct me if I'm wrong about that. Um, I am not sure, but uh, you know, it's the Herschel Parker on the, on the editing. Um, so he's kind of the Melville uh, scholar. So I picked this up, haven't read it. Love Melville, Moby Dick, best book, excited. Next up, uh, Daniel Defoe's Journal of the Plague Year. This is the Norton Critical Edition. I tend, this is another one of those, I sort of tend to just pick these up when I see them uh, if I don't have a copy already. Um, I think they're excellent. I love all of the um, supplementary materials, the reviews, the academic articles, the sort of uh, ephemera that is tied to the, the text uh, that they include in these. So um, never read this, so I'm, I'm excited. And again, I really enjoy these editions. It's, there's this sound. Oh, I think my wife might just be in the shower. I th I'm like, is it raining? I thought she showered already. But I was like, is it raining outside? I don't know what's happening. Okay. Two things. Uh, two more fiction books, and then I'll quickly run through the um, philosophy nonfiction stuff that I bought just for posterity, completion's sake. So these are two John Barth books. Barth? Bart? I'm a, I think it's Barth. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. Uh, anyway, this is um, The Last Voyage of Somebody the Sailor, the Dalkey uh, uh, Archive Press edition. Um, I've never read any Barth, so there you go. There's another one. Uh, you can just disregard all my opinions. I've never read any books by any author, um, so I don't know why you're watching this channel uh, or listening to the podcast or this video because I've never read anything. I just bought a bunch of books. I've never read any, any book ever, apparently, so no Barth. So I got this. This looks interesting. It's kind of like a... Uh, it seems like a guy who gets sucked into a time warp and he winds up at Sinbad, the sailor's dinner table, and they engage in a sort of, you know, Thousand and One Arabian Nights storytelling competition. Um, so this looks fun and sort of interesting. And then I picked up a book that I, that one I had never heard of, but this one I had heard of and have, it's come recommended highly, um, Giles Goat Boy. Um, I've heard a number of people um, recommend this and, and speak highly of it and Barth in general. And we're going to be doing a Barth on the podcast uh, at some point this year which I won't tell you what it is. Okay, so that's all the fiction that I got. I'll quickly run through the philosophy stuff because most of it is uh, arcane and, and kind of probably boring to most of you. Um, 
This is uh, Rights, Restitution, and Risk, Essays in Moral Theory, which is a sort of collected essays by Judith Jarvis Thompson, um, very well known for her, uh, for a number of things, for her defense of abortion, the um, uh, violinist case some of you may be familiar with if you're involved in philosophy at all, or if you took a class. And then um, I believe, I don't think she, um, I think Philippa Foote came up with the trolley problem first, but uh, Thompson was also really involved in the early kind of theorizing around the trolley problem. So there's a couple essays in here about the trolley problem uh, and a couple other ones that are more specifically relevant to some work that I'm doing uh, for my actual job. Next up, uh, this just looked interesting to me and never heard of this guy and, and um, uh, John Herman Randall Jr. Don't know anything about him, uh, but it's called How Philosophy Uses Its Past. I think this is just a really interesting topic uh, I've always been interested by philosophy's kind of meta relationship to its own history. Um, and uh, that looks like an interesting discussion of that topic. This is um, George Kateb's The Inner Ocean, Individualism and Democratic Culture. I wrote my dissertation on um, individualism uh, and anarchism specifically and sort of thinking those things together. Um, and so I have a, a, a lingering sort of abiding interest in the concept of individualism and kind of uh, rescuing it from its really negative associations with capitalism and all that. I haven't been working on it recently, but that was my dissertation. And I had not found or read this book during that research, um, which means my dissertation sucks and is a failure. So there's that. Then just a general... Uh, uh, I'm not sure to, what to expect about this, but Bernard Gertz's morality, it's nature and justification. I have heard of Bernard Gertz before. I haven't read much of his work, so I don't really know what his kind of um, meta-ethical approach is or how he thinks about this. So, um, you know, just a big book on morality. Hopefully it has some stuff that's going to be relevant to the work that I'm doing now, but we'll see. I'll, I'll kind of pick through it. I probably won't read it straight through. Um, and then this one, again, just kind of looked interesting. Again, thinking about the kind of like history of philosophy uh, uh, vibe. This is uh, Converts to the Real, Catholicism and the Making of Continental Philosophy by Edward Baring. Don't know anything about Baring, but um, this is a pretty pretty recent book, 2019. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, again, thinking about philosophy from this kind of historical perspective and specifically the kind of the sort of continental tradition and how it linked up with religion on the continent um, I think is uh, really sort of interesting and it looked interesting so I fucking bought it you can't stop me uh, that's it those are all the books that I bought this summer 22 minutes 45 seconds that's way faster than I expected to get done with this um, I will do a um, probably reading roundup of the books that I read over the summer. It wasn't that many. I talked about most of them already a little bit. And I'll probably do some individual reviews over on the Spinecrackers Patreon, patreon.com slash Spinecrackers, $2 a month. Uh, and listen to the podcast. You can just listen to it anywhere you get podcasts. We just released an episode a couple weeks ago on uh, Gerald Murnane's The Plains, which was a fascinating discussion. That was our second Murnane that we had done for the show. And we'll have another one coming up soon on an author that you had to read in high school, probably. Um, not that, not the book you had to read, though, a different one. All right, so that's it. Fat Stacks, absolutely unhinged summer purchasing activity. Uh, and I will see you all next time and or on the pod. Thanks for watching. Peace.